Last week, we talked about what it feels like to have not a home sweet home, but a home bittersweet home. And for the most part, it's because our homes have become overwhelmed by the fact that it's become our office, it's become our cafe, it's become our daycare center, our gym for those of us who work out, and it's become 24-7 in light of the availability of technology. For those who have school-aged children, it's become their school, and it's also become the church. As such, the home has become overwhelmed. We discussed how you can fix that and how you can operate with the right set of values. Today, as we continue and move forward, I want to talk to you about ordering your disordered world, our disordered world. I've used the billiard table as a mnemonic, and if for those of you who are billiard players, there's obviously, uh, I've used it, and there's not that, it's not going to be in the order of the numbers or the settings, but the point in all of this is that every day, our lives are like a billiard table. Something smacks us at the beginning of the day, and the world becomes a disorder. The question is, which ones do I prioritize? Which ball do I pick up first, and it falls into a different hole? How do I get it back? Or maybe I want to get something, but it's within, not within reach. In, you, in view of this, with the pre-COVID days, we've always had the dilemma of, this, of saying, I want to be at home with my family, but I need money to provide for them. Reality is, whether it's pre-COVID or in COVID, we still have the dilemma of, I'm at home with my family, but I'm just as busy, if not busier than before, and it's driving me crazy. Now, it's a dilemma, isn't it? For those of us who are singles, you have the pre-COVID situation is I want freedom and time for myself, but I need to work hard to ensure I have a good future. In the in-COVID times, we now have, I have time and freedom, but I can't go out and do what I want. I'm not even sure if I have a future. And for those of us who are younger or students, at pre-COVID times, I wish summer is here so I can enjoy a break, but I know the consequences of not getting good grades. And COVID, I no longer have, long, I have longer breaks, but I'm not sure what the future of my education will be like. I think even my teacher is not sure. The point in saying all of this is because of the situation we're faced with, we need to find a way to create order. And many times we think that the disorder only happened in COVID, but the reality is this is pre-COVID and in COVID because the issue is not really ordering just our minds and our actions but ordering our hearts. Matthew 6, 21, we talked about this last week. Jesus said, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. And he's talking about values, treasures, the highest of values. And if there's anything true about our hearts is 100% of our behavior is rooted in what we value. Whether we know it or not, whether we do it unknowingly or knowingly, whether we want to not do it or do it, it's the reality is we default to doing the things that we value 100% of the time. Matthew chapter 6, verse 19 says, Do not lay for yourselves treasures. And this is about what is most valuable. The key to knowing what is the most valuable, Jesus says, is that it is where you lay it. If you lay it on earth, then it is not as valuable. But if you lay it somewhere else, and what you lay up on earth is where you store it. What stores on earth is not as valuable as what stores in what he says in heaven. So he says, store for yourselves treasures in heaven. And the only thing that really stores in heaven is not food or clothing or furniture or cars or money, but God and people. A hundred percent of our values, therefore, is what he calls the Greek word automate, where we get the word automatic. When we have the right set of values in our hearts, our behaviors, our minds, our wishes, our emotions follow automatically. Notice in verse 24, he goes on to say, no one. In fact, if you try to do this, it won't work for you because he says, no one. No one can serve two masters. And one is going to be either the one that you're going to hate and one is you're going to love. And notice how these words are not ordinary words. They are love words. They are not words of the mind. They're words of the heart. And notice where it says, devoted to one and despise the other. Our hearts are going to determine whether we're going to serve one or love the other, hate the other, be devoted to one, it says, or despise the other. This is the way the heart works. And many times we think that 
ordering our values are rooted in our minds, in our thinking, in our intellect. When the Bible tells us it's about the heart. He goes on to say in the second half of verse 24, you cannot serve both God and money. And this is interesting because he likens money to God. In fact, money is so powerful that it can become God in our lives. And he goes on to point out that that's the first value is God and the second value is money. And very often, that is where the wrestling comes in and where the disorder happens because our hearts are not really sure. Money can provide us with a lot of things that God can. Money can give us peace and friends and resources and good food. God can do the same. But then there's the wrestling match of one is able to deliver and the other can deliver almost the same thing. Now, in verse 25, it says, Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about life. Then it's interesting how Jesus puts this to us where one of the problems of worry is rooted in what we value. Many times we worry about the wrong things because our hearts are not ordered properly. And so we start worrying because the value systems are not quite in the right places. He goes on to say in verse 25, but what will you eat, what you will drink, or your body, what you will wear? Then he poses this question. Is not your life more than food? In other words, he's talking about another set of values. He says God is the most valuable and money is also valuable. He didn't say that money wasn't valuable. It's that God is more valuable. Then he says, isn't life or suke? When you read the Bible, the Bible uses the word life in different contexts. And there are three different Greek words for life. There's the word uh, zoe, which is the God kind of life. There's the word bios, which refers to our physical bodies. And then there's the word suke, which means that which has breath, our relationships, our own life. And he says our lives are more valuable than food. And he says this word food uses the word trophy, which is what we consume, which includes our movies, our Netflixes, our, 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 our the things that we enjoy, the things we consume, the things that fulfill us are valuable, but they're not as valuable as life or suke. Notice where he continues in verse 25, where he says, is not life more than food and the body? And he's asking a question. Do you realize that your body is more important or more valuable than clothes? And here he gives us or outlines for us the six most valuable things in our lives. Our body, our soma, which is our security, our health, our protection, and our clothes, which is our induma, the things we wear. Uh, that includes trinkets and cosmetics. It includes uh, furniture and cars and all the things around us. Now, remember what Jesus said. The highest things are the ones that store in heaven. And there are only two of them because clothes, food, money, and even our health do not store in heaven. The only thing that stores in heaven are God and life, relationships. In which case, we can say that you can trade these two for one. In other words, the real value is not money, but life. When we start ordering our hearts with the right values, the disorder leaves us. Now, notice also where he says that number five is body, but the reality is our bodies are more valuable than our money because in the world of values, what is rare or what is uncommon is more valuable And our hearts, our liver, our brains, our physical bodies are rare, rarer than money for sure, in which case you can trade those two in terms of what's really more valuable. Interestingly, our body is obviously more valuable than money. And we also know that when you have a lot of money, you can buy food and you can trade those two as well. And there you have the hierarchy of values. Now, when you look at clothes, these do not store in heaven. And when you want to understand values, you want to understand timelessness, not just something that's rare. When something is timeless or enduring or eternal, that has high value. Our clothes don't have that. Our things, our furniture, our cars, they wear out over time, in which case they're not as valuable. Our food is valuable, but the reality is the best Michelin star, five-star food you eat in six hours looks exactly the same, if not smells exactly the same. In other words, it is not that valuable. Ultimately, the real value is God and our relationships. If we're healthy and we have a reasonable amount of money, we will have an ordered life. The problem sometimes is we look at money as God, 
and we make it bigger than it really should be. And when that happens, our problems begin. Because the reality is there is a hierarchy to values, and it starts with God, the spiritual side of our lives. When we value God and our spiritual lives, then we will be ordered to order our lives and our relational lives, and then eventually our physical lives. And then finally, we can order our financial lives. The key to understanding an ordered heart is to understand that the essence of value is hierarchy. Without hierarchy, there is no sense of value. The very nature of value is there is a hierarchy. Some things are more valuable than others. Not to say that these things, other things are not valuable. They're not just as valuable as what is truly valuable. Question for you today, how clear is your hierarchy of values? Which values do you think are misplaced? This is a good time. COVID is a good way to understand that. The fact is, pre-COVID or in COVID, we have a disordered heart. A COVID situation allows us and gives us the opportunity to set the right values in the right places as this disorder faces us. Second thing you want to understand about a disordered or ordered life is a picture of a bucket. Our lives are like a bucket. We collect things that come into this bucket and fill us up. If you would imagine this three-walled bucket, bucket that has three walls, and that this bucket has the walls of relationship, a relational side, a physical side, and a financial side. And these sides are important to make life what they're meant to be. And as our life fills up, our life enjoys a certain quality and a certain sense of value. The problem is when certain sides of these are stronger than others. For instance, our financial side is stronger than our physical side, then what tends to happen is the quality and the value of our life settle at a certain level. Because the truth is, values don't just have a hierarchy. Values actually overlap. We need all of these things to work. If we have a relational life, but we don't have a financial life, then we will have issues. We have a physical life and a financial life, but the relationships are a mess. We will have issues, and so on and so forth. The point is values overlap. And when you overlap them correctly, they work. Now, here's the other problem. When you have a bottom that's not there, then everything you put in flows out. You have this thing that you thought was filling up, but actually was flowing out of your life because there's one more component to the overlapping life, and that's a good spiritual life. In other words, you need and I need God. If you were to look at this bucket from a top view, you'll understand it even better. Our relational side, our marriage, our family, our key relationships are important. But the reality is balancing that and ordering that is not quite that easy or that simple. Our physical lives need good nutrition, a lot of rest, a lot of exercise, and the the things that will keep us healthy. We need finances that we earn right and save right and invest right. But most of the time, we carry this load ourselves. And so the overlapping values are hard to balance and to make happen, which is why we need God, because values overlap and only He can order our hearts properly. It would be like the billiard table where at the end of the start of the day, you get smacked and all your balls are running everywhere. And you end your day by grabbing all the balls and setting them up back and saying, God, you are number one. And as you order your days, you begin to realize the rest of the bucket fills up and life happens. Which wall in your bucket needs evaluating and strengthening? Which wall in your bucket? Is it your physical life, your relational life? Is it your financial life? That's important because the truth of the matter is this does not happen every week. This actually happens every day. The essence of life is, or values is a hierarchy and values overlap. But the final point I want to make today is that while that is true, values shift over time and season. In other words, what's what makes this whole thing tricky? As we talked about last week, our hearts are deceitful. It's because it's not easy to figure out what's valuable because values shift over time, and over season. For example, a $100 bill is more valuable than a bottle of water. 
now in a different time, in a different season. For instance, in a desert where there is no other bottled water, then obviously the bottled water is more valuable than the $100 bill. Values shift over time and season. So that's why it's important for us to know the hierarchy, the way they overlap, and that when they shift, we're able to shift for the moment while we go back to the same hierarchy and back to the same overlaps. Notice what Jesus says in verse 25. He says, therefore, I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Remember the questions he asked and how we answer these are important. Is not life more than food and your body more than clothing? In essence, he was saying, can you understand that some things are more valuable than others? Then he gives us the answer to how do you understand when the value shift? The key is found in verse 26. He says, look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor store in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Jesus' solution to our values issue or dilemma is very simple. He says, take your eyes out of the problem. Look at the birds of the air. Take time to disassociate yourself from the rushing and the moving and the problems that beset you and begin to look at the birds of the air. I, I've, I've made a habit of doing that. In fact, I did that just this morning. I practically do that every morning. I like watching birds in flight. I watch, well, watching pigeons and, and all kinds of minus. But my favorite would be birds that are sitting in a high tension wire. <laughs> so relaxed and so chilled, not realizing they can fry any moment. <laughs> I like the story where they say the birds were asking, why do you think these people keep on worrying? <laughs> and the other bird says, I really had no idea. You think they, they could learn to relax if they just watch us? The other bird says, for sure. The question is, if they will find the time to. <laughs> it's when you set your days right, and you finally realize and take ball number one and say, this is the ball that matters. And when you set that right, Jesus said, when you look at the birds of the air, that they neither sow nor reap nor store in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them, you begin to realize the key to an ordered heart. Are you not much more valuable than they? The final question that Jesus asks is, do you even know how valuable you are? Because the only way you're going to understand the values of this world is when you finally understand that life or you next to God <laughs> is the most valuable thing you can ever possess. I want to show you this painting by a man named Barnett Newman. It's known as the one meant six or five or six, I believe. And this, this, this painting was bought for $43.8 million. <laughs> when you look at the painting, you're probably telling yourself, my kid can do that. The person who bought this did not buy it because it was an extraordinary painting. He bought it because he found value in it. And that's the same for you and me. We're valued by God not because we're truly valuable. We're valued by God only because he chose to find value in us. That's how values work. You're valuable not because you're valuable, but because God, who is the most valuable, so valued you. That's how you became valuable. That painting became valuable, not because of the actual painting, but somebody dared to pay $43.8 million for it. And so we come back to this idea of the first ball. When you don't value God or don't even realize how valuable he is, you've actually resulted in undervaluing yourself. I want you to remember that. Every time you undervalue who God is in your life, what you've effectively done is undervalue yourself. Because God, who is the most valuable, is the one person who values you with all eternity, for all of life, for all of the best, that he gave you Jesus, who was most valuable to him. When you set your day with God as the most valuable, pretty much the rest follows. The walls are built, the, 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 the pail fills up, because you've understood what is truly valuable. Final question, what do you think are the benefits of knowing that you're valuable to God? And how can you demonstrate to God and to yourself that he is the most valuable? As we depart from our moment of meditating on the word of God, I want to come to that place of proclaiming Jesus, the one who spoke these words, and the one who saved us and showed us how valuable we are. 
And I want to pray this prayer with you just as we begin to finish this moment and receive communion. Lord Jesus, we thank you for valuing us so much that you came to seek and save us. Teach us how to order our disordered world by understanding and clarifying our hierarchy of values. Show us that ultimately only you and our relationships store in heaven. Help us to understand that, thing, that the things that are truly valuable overlap with each other and show us how best to find those overlaps given our unique situations. And Lord, when the times and seasons cause what's valuable to shift, show us that our value never diminishes because you value us. Order our hearts that we may always choose to make you the first and last thing we put in our day. And in your name, Jesus, we pray. And everyone said, Amen.